Welcome to Truth in Christ, everyone. My name is Joshua Dobbs, and I am so glad that you could join me for another great message. Today, we're going to be talking about what it means to be accounted worthy to escape the things that shall come to pass mentioned in Luke, the 21st chapter. Now, there are a lot of people who really take this out of context and believe that this has something to do with the rapture and escaping the persecution that is mentioned in Revelation, as mentioned in Daniel, that should come upon the saints when the beast makes war with the saints and overcomes them or utterly wears them out. In fact, they've created a whole new group to take this persecution for them in their theology. Now, let's look at Acts, the fifth chapter, the 40th through 42nd verse. Now, the apostles were being persecuted for preaching in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Gamaliel had counseled to leave Christians alone because if this was not of God, then it would just simply vanish and go away. Or if it was of God, then they would be fighting against God. And he reminded them of Judas of Galilee, who after he had been slain, all his followers had dispersed and the movement was over. Now, if we look at the 40th verse, it says that the council had agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Now, notice that it says that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Now, this seems to go against the narrative that you can be accounted worthy to escape the persecution that is to come. And then when you read the 42nd verse, it says, And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. So they had patience, they had faith, they continued to preach in the name of Jesus, and they were rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer the shame for his name, for the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, this is a completely different message in the Bible than what is being promoted and taught within the dispensational pre-tribulation rapture camp. And a lot of people would say, but brother Josh, that's just one verse. It's not just one verse. There are more verses that we are going to get into and then we will come back to being accounted worthy to escape the things that shall come to pass. Because when you look into the Greek, it reads completely different than what you see in certain translations like the King James Version Bible. But the term tribulation, now this term tends to be misleading because people have you to believe that the tribulation is just the event of God's wrath. And that's not true. And we're going to read in a minute what tribulation is to the saints. And in fact, I did an entire video on the tribulation. Will Christians go through the tribulation parts one and two? And I will leave the link in the description box down below so you can check those videos out if you're interested in that study. Because the term tribulation means something completely different to the saints of God, to the church, than it does to the enemies of God. The term tribulation for the church actually means persecution, and the term tribulation is actually God's vengeance against those who trouble the church and put the church through the tribulation of persecution. In fact, when we go into 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter, fourth verse, it says, so that we ourselves glory in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations. Now notice that they're glorying in the church through their persecutions and their tribulations that they endure, which is the manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom. That still is a completely different narrative than the interpretation that dispensational pre-tribulation rapture teachers give Luke, the 21st chapter, it's saying that you would be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. And then when we go down into the sixth verse, notice this, it says, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. So this is the second coming of the Lord. He says that he is recompensing tribulation to them that trouble the church. Now, when we go back to the fourth verse, it says that the church is being put through persecutions and 
tribulation. So God is rewarding those who trouble the church with persecution and tribulations with tribulation. So again, God's wrath is over the church. God's wrath is because the church is being persecuted. The plagues come because the church is has been persecuted. And the final judgment is against those who persecute the church and those who do not know God, that do not follow the gospel. As we read, in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of God of his power and we parallel that with what we read in revelation the 14th chapter the 10th through the 11th verse it talks about the wrath of god being poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall torment with the fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the lamb now if we go back to what it says in second thessalonians when the lord is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels that he will punish those who know not god and do not obey the gospel of the lord jesus christ he will punish them with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So these two passages are speaking of the same event. When the Lord returns, he will reward those who put the church through persecutions and tribulations through tribulation. I recommend that you watch the videos I made on will Christians go through the tribulation parts one and two that will add context to this topic. I'm not going to really focus on that a lot here in this video because I really want to focus more on what it means to be accounted worthy to escape these things that shall come to pass. But as we see there is no escape of persecution through the tribulation. In fact early Christians seem to believe that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for the Lord's name. Going back to 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter, looking at the 10th verse, again, this is the second coming. We've we've already seen that this is the end of the tribulation when the people who have persecuted the church have been punished and the Lord has returned with his angels. It says, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day, the day of the Lord's return, the second coming. In the 11th verse is, wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasures of his goodness and the work of faith with power. So at the second coming, when the Lord returns with his angels and punishes the enemies of God, and he punishes them with an everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, it talks about the time that he would be glorified in his saints and then they say that they pray always for them that they would be counted worthy of this calling so the calling is that they will suffer through the persecutions and through the tribulations until the day of the resurrection because the church is a witness and a testimony through the tribulation and so there would be much suffering persecution and tribulation but there is a reminder that the lord will punish those who trouble the church and god will put them through tribulation and he will punish all the ungodly with everlasting destruction but now i could continue on into second thessalonians the second chapter and talk about the return of the lord and our gathering together unto him but The thing I really want you to notice is that the tribulation or the term tribulation has a different meaning for the church because it is talking about persecution and that the church would be counted worthy to suffer for the kingdom, to suffer for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But this is a completely different narrative than what's being sold by many teachers today. So what does it mean to be accounted worthy to escape the things that shall come to pass when being counted worthy 
in Acts, the fifth chapter, and 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter, indicates that the church will be counted worthy to suffer persecution, tribulation, and shame for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's look at that passage in Luke, the 21st chapter. We'll read the full passage in context. Then we'll break down some Greek words and look at how it is translated. Now, when we look at Luke, the 21st chapter, the 34th through 36th verse, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. So what is it talking about here? Well, first it's talking about people not being aware of what is coming. What's coming? The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this day will not catch a Christian unaware. It will not be a snare for us because we have our eyes open. We're looking for the coming of the Lord. It says, watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape. So when we look at accounted worthy to escape, let's look at the first part, accounted worthy. The Greek word for that is katis kuo which means to be strong to another's detriment, to prevail against, to be superior in strength, to overcome, to prevail. This word has nothing to do about your worthiness to be raptured. This word has something to do with your strength, your ability to prevail. In fact, when you look at Luke 23, 23, in both those instances, it is talking about someone's ability, someone's strength to prevail or not to prevail. So it is a reference to someone's strength. In fact, many translations now translates this in Luke, the 21st chapter and the 36th verse in a way that conveys strength. So it is actually saying that you may be strong enough to escape. So what does your strength have to do with pre-tribulation rapture? Absolutely nothing. Because in the resurrection, in the rapture, it is the Lord who catches you up. Now, I understand why a lot of people read this passage and they read accounted worthy to escape and they assume that means rapture. However, this has to do with your strength and not your worth. So you're not, it's not that you're worthy to escape. It's that you're strong enough to escape. And now let's look at the word escape. So let's look at the Greek word here for escape, ekfugo, which means to escape or flee. And in fact, when we look at Acts, the 19th chapter, the 16th verse, that is the kind of escape that is being indicated in this verse. It says, so that they fled, ekfugo, so that they fled out of that house. They were escaping or fleeing from the man with the evil spirit that leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them. It says they had fled out. They had ran away. They escaped. So when we look at these two words, katis kuo, strong enough, and ek go to flee, to escape by fleeing or running away from something, we understand then it's saying you're strong enough to flee, to run away, that kind of escape. You're strong enough to escape the things that shall come to pass. So you'll be able to stand before the Son of Man. So how does your strength and your ability to flee play a role in this? So when we look at this, it's talking about in the 34th verse that the world is consumed in sin. They're partying, they're drunk, they're in the cares of life. So when the day of the Lord comes, the second coming happens, it comes as a snare on them. So if we look at the 36th verse, it says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape. So watch, be vigilant, be strong enough to escape all the things that shall come to pass. That is the things of the world, the sin of the world, if you escape it. If you flee from it, if you have the strength, 
then when the day of the Lord comes, it won't catch you unaware and you'll be able to stand before the Son of Man at the last day. So when we look at this scripture, it's telling us to watch and pray that we are strong enough to escape the things that will come upon the world because the world is in drunkenness and partying and the cares of life. This is a salvation message telling us if we are strong enough to flee the cares of this life and drunkenness and partying and, and all the sins of this world, we will be able to stand before the Son of Man at the last day. The day of the Lord, the second coming of Christ, comes as a snare upon those who aren't watching, who aren't praying, who aren't strong enough. But then when the scripture actually is referring to someone's being counted worthy, they are counted worthy to suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ. See, they fled the cares of this world, but the enemies of God will hate you because they hated Jesus first. And so they will put the church through persecutions and tribulation, but the Lord will repay those who trouble the church with tribulation. And now we can reconcile the messages of Acts, the fifth chapter, and 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter, with what is being said in Luke, the 21st chapter. Otherwise, these appear like a contradiction because the messages in Acts, the fifth chapter, and 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter, is telling us to rejoice and understand that we will be counted worthy to suffer Shame for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We would be counted worthy to suffer for the kingdom of God. And the message in Luke, the 21st chapter, is telling us to be strong enough to resist temptation. See, now these reconcile and they don't appear to contradict one another. Because in dispensational teachings, they tell the church that they will not suffer the persecution from the Antichrist that is mentioned in Revelation and Daniel. They say that's for an entirely different group. And that group that's being persecuted will also not only be persecuted by God's enemies, but will be tormented and persecuted by God himself through his plagues through the tribulation. Even though in 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter, it tells us that God will put the people who puts the church through tribulation through tribulation themselves. He will take vengeance on them. And he relates it all to the second coming of Christ. So Luke wasn't telling us that we were worthy to escape. In fact, Luke wrote Acts in which he said the apostles rejoiced in the fact that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. So Luke, the 21st chapter, is not about your worth. It's about your strength and ability to flee sin. I really hope you enjoyed this message and found it edifying. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button down below, turn on the notification bell, and set it to all. Like, share, comment every interaction with this channel. It's going to help us with the YouTube algorithm and help us to spread the gospel of God and get these messages around the globe. God bless you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.